you've ever gone to the grocery store with hay in your hair, this episode of Barn Stories is for you. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prins, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We've searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, these stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. There's nothing quite as glamorous as life with horses, said no real horse person ever. Despite the stereotypes, anyone who has actually mucked stalls in the middle of winter or sweat through their shirt while stacking hay knows that horse keeping is a consistently gritty experience. The essay in this episode addresses that reality and then explores why we continually return to the dirty and exhausting work of caring for horses. What payoff could there possibly be? Of course, if you're listening to this podcast, you already know the answer to that question. But this author states the case with particular eloquence. Let's listen to This Glamorous Life, written by Samya Arya Haas and read by Taylor Otto. The other day, I worked both my horses took a quick shower, put out the hay, ran to the farm supply store, and then to the grocery store. By this point, my humidity-enhanced hair was exploding from my head every which way. In the fruit aisle, I pushed my hair out of my eyes, and a large amount of hay rained down all over the strawberries. Nearby, a man with some kids gasped at me. I have horses, I said apologetically. I just fed them hay. I guess some got in my hair. The kids perked up at the mention of horses, and their dad looked at me. Horses, he replied. That sounds glamorous. People have funny ideas. I am lucky and privileged to live alongside these fantastic, mysterious animals. But glamorous? I pause for a moment to consider the glamour that fills my life. The worse the weather, the more my horses need. In the sweltering, bug-infested heat, They require fly spray and cooling showers, which leave them refreshed and me filthy. On frigid winter days, I scrape snow off of their coats and pick the ice out of their hooves. And when the hydrant in the barn is frozen solid, I fill buckets in the bathtub and haul them out to the barn after shoveling through four feet of Minnesota snow. And of course, every day they need to eat. Even when I have a paper due or when I'm running late for an appointment, or when I'm coughing my lungs out, when I'm recovering from abdominal surgery, or when I just want to sleep in. Every day, year after year. Then, all that food and water turns into waste product. But when I'm finally done shoveling poop, scraping mud off my horse, grooming, and then cleaning up all the mud I just transferred from the horse to the floor, to the barn, to myself, finally, it's time to ride. Yes. Today's episode is brought to you by Enjoy Yum's Horse and Dog Treats, owned by Jack's Inc. Enjoy Yum's treats come in three flavors, apple, carrot, and mint. They are made right here in the U.S. of A. and consist of only six natural human-grade ingredients. Being veterinarian-inspired, Enjoy Yum's do not contain any wheat, soy, corn, or added sugar. Enjoy Yum's Horse and Dog Treats are safe for all animals, goats and sheep included. It's what's inside the bag that counts. Choose Enjoy Yum's Horse and Dog Treats to keep your pets happy and healthy. Riding, of course, is less about cantering with the wind through your hair and more like walk-trot transitions with the sweat under your helmet running into your eyes. There is no training montage with Eye of the Tiger playing in the background when you fall on your butt or on your head. It is an intensely physical and mental process. It forces you to face your demons. Your insecurity, fear, aggression, and doubts are right there in the saddle with you. Your horse will reflect them back at you. You will feel incompetent, ashamed, hopeless. You will cry. You will fail. You will deal with it. Then there are the days when you fly, unmoored, free, 
when your pole seems to travel between you and your horse, linking you as one, and you feel a creature-to-creature intimacy that is raw, complicated, and ecstatic. Then you will hit the ground and get up and do it all over again. And when you are done riding, you will have a thirsty, sweaty horse and a thirsty, sweaty self. And we all know who gets taken care of first. This transcendence comes through sweat, pain, and tears, not fantasy. I've spent the last 10 years locked in a struggle with chronic pain and multiple surgeries due to endometriosis. There were days where I couldn't lift a grooming brush, much less a bucket of water, and my horses and I had to rely heavily on outside help. So today, I'm thrilled to be able to run errands, to have hay in my hair and mud on my boots, and even to shovel poop. It is not glamorous. It's way better than that. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at Equus Barn Stories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of the Equine Network.